Welcome back to Saxton 4x4 and we reviewed the 2022 Range Rover which you'll find marketing put a link up here earlier on in the year. Now beside me is quite possibly the most eagerly anticipated car of the year not only for Saxton's but for me as well. So join me as I take a look and our first touch on the new Range Rover Sport. And onto the exterior. So before I jump in, a little bit of housekeeping. Range Rover's a brand are completely redesigning all of their vehicles and they want a theme, a recognizable theme throughout the process and this is no exception. So you may notice very much Velar, the slimmest headlamp that they put on a car. They've condensed it, looks a little more aggressive. On the front end, rose gold accents. We've had that first in the R Dynamic Velar. So rose gold, rose gold, you get the accents. It breaks up, it's a nice little contrast. Working our way down, new wheels. We love wheels, 22 inch. There is obviously a nice variety of wheels on the new Sport. Those are beautiful. They're like a graphite gray finish, black calipers. Really, really classy. Coming down the side of the car, following again the Velar, bit of a trendsetter here. Seamless door handles. So they do fold in completely flat, coupled with the fact that you've got no seal. So the seal comes in, boom, straight down. There's no bulky trim, super, super clean. Now, Oski, if you follow me around without being consumed by mother nature, I want to show you the rear. Now the rear of the car is a somewhat a controversial option. It's, I'm not sure. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot slicker, but the jury's still out on this one on whether or not I like it. We'll come back to that later on, but for now, let's jump inside. It's definitely a Range Rover. Okay, so what have we got? First impressions. Um, steering wheel. So the new Range Rover has one piece. This has a bit more of a V to it, a little bit of an extra element. Still no flat bottom steering wheel, which I personally like, but that is really, really nice. Dashboard, you've got the new floating dash. So the resolution is way higher in this one. It's a lot crisper, a lot sharper, which you'd expect. So that's super clean, big fan of that. But the main thing that I do really like, the new screen. So this new screen, much clearer than the old one. The old one had a bit of a curve to it. You had to tilt with the sun, if, depending on where it was and which way you were facing. That is much nicer, a lot easier to use, a lot bigger to use. And Range Rover, I thank you. You've kept buttons. I like analog stuff as much as the next person. It's nice to see the things that you're going to be using while driving. You've got haptic feed. It's there. It's, 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 it's physical. It's not a screen. So I'm a big fan of that. Concealed under there, we've got a little wireless Apple charger or wireless charging port. This has just been cleaned up. One thing I did notice, you've got storage upon storage upon storage bins door cards you could hide about four dogs and nobody will ever know double yeah you get you get the point plenty of ample storage driving position i'll touch on later on but for now let me see what the headroom is like in the back so i genuinely have not sat in the back of the new range rover and it's nice i mean what do you expect right I mean, first thing, there's a lot of recline in this seat, which I imagine, aha, electrically adjusting seats. I would not be upset going on a long journey in this car. I mean, leg room, it's in my driving position. I'm obviously like six foot three, <laughs> but still, I have loads of leg room, ample headspace, nice big glass pan roof. These handles, these are from the Vogue. They're, they're the new ones or the daddy. Um, I mean, Cup holders, again, I love how Range Rover have over-engineered cup holders in every one of their cars. I mean, that is actually a really slick operation. Climate, heated seats in the rear, nice thick carpets. You've got some really thick carpets in the back as well. Charging points. Yeah, typical Range Rover, I'm happy. Let's check the boot. And into the boot where... 
I don't know where the button is. First time I've been in this boot. First impressions. It's a very similar size to the old Range Rover Sport. Um, in terms of literage, it is actually slightly smaller than the predecessor, but bigger with the seats down. So seats folded down, you get a bit more space. Seats up, marginal, you're not gonna notice it. Same control, so you can drop the seats, lower the car. That's all still very much the same. They all come with this little pop-up now, pops and pillows, change your boots, change your shoes, water the dog, whatever you do. But yeah, very, very Range Rover. So, it's enough of that. Let's get it on the road, because let's be honest, that's where we need to be. Okay, here we go. First drive of the new P400, or P440E, as this one is. So I've done five miles in this car. Oh, actually, that's a lie, Oscar, I've done six. I've done six miles, and I kept it very tame. Didn't go through it, didn't touch anything. So this is gonna be the first sort of main official drive. Now, the first thing you are greeted with, apart from Squirrel, first thing is how smooth it is this car is ridiculously smooth so this if you didn't already know has very similar if not the same running gear as the new 2022 Range Rover the big Range Rover the main tweaks between this one are the suspension you get far more adaptive dynamics you get more adjustment in the dynamic mode but day to day we're just going to leave it in comfort for the time being as I go through some quite tight lanes. It's so smooth. And we've all commented on how quiet it is. Like, there are, apart from Oscar rustling with his jacket, it is ridiculously quiet in here. The sound dampening is phenomenal. And I'm not, I'm not fluffing this, guys. I'm not making it up. It is genuinely unbelievable how quiet this car is. It's not a Cullinan. It's not a Bentayga but the noise level in this destroys them. This is another, another level. Steering wise, it's weighted. It feels nice. Um, they've done a wicked job, but it doesn't feel jittery. It doesn't want to bounce around. It's just a planted car. And I think a lot of that has to come down to the adaptive air suspension. So this has the adaptive dynamics um, with adjustment. So you can go from comfort to eco. And just on the topic of steering, you can option this car with the seven and a half degree rear steering, which if you get an option to do so, add it. Unbelievable, but without it, you're not gonna miss it. So this one has just the standard steering and it is, it is more than fine. We've all commented on this is more than adequate. Now driving position, typical Range Rover, I'm nice and high. I genuinely feel a little bit higher than the predecessor. I don't know if that's just because of where my seat currently is, but it feels a little bit more commanding, a little taller. It doesn't feel as wide. It actually feels quite, quite narrow, squeezing through the gaps, which is amazing. With the adjustment of your dynamic select switch down on the dash, you can do it without looking, which is nice. Two flicks to the left, into dynamic mode. Now, sticking with the suspension side, the car instantly firms up. Without going into the technical analysis, that is a combination of different materials, 35% stiffer chassis, body roll, and all of those components. I wasn't the most intelligent one in my family. My sister, however, very technically sound. She could probably give a better breakdown than me. But from a driver's perspective, it's stiff, it does harden up. I can feel it already on the road. You can hear it crash a little bit more. It is firmer in that dynamic mode. Then while we're in that dynamic mode, I just want to touch on the engine. So this particular one is the P440E. Now the range is super easy. P, petrol, 440, the brake horsepower, E, electric. So it could not get any simpler. They do a D300, and a D350, which I'll leave you geniuses work out what they stand for. And of course, there's the full fat V8 coming out. We're gonna put it in sport mode. We're just gonna see, I've not done a rolling launch or anything, so we'll build it a little bit. Put to carpet, bit of a delay. Sounds nice. <laughs> Not the kickdown I was expecting. It doesn't hit you like the rest of the range, especially the old P440E. 
400, that had a bit more of an aggressive pull, but that is smooth. It's really smooth. The 3 liter V6 sounds wicked. Um, and I wonder if I can actually... That sounds wicked. I'm sorry, that is a Ranger or Sport in a hybrid and that sounds that sounds nice. So engine wise. Not bad. And we're back, we're back at the showroom. I have managed to put an extra 30 miles on this car. Now it was always going to be a good car. The new Range Rover, the 2022 variant, is a wicked, wicked car. This is the sporty variant with the same running gear. So it was always going to be a sick car. It's always going to be an amazing car. But is it a worthy replacement to the Range Rover? Personally, I think it is. The new tech, the body, the design, Range Rover have just stepped their game up. Now, as you guys know, Saxon 4x4, we are a, we're a premium 4x4 dealership and we've built our business and reputation on selling quality used Range Rovers. You know, this is, this is what we do day in day out so I have no doubt you're gonna see a lot more of these on the market a lot more content from us uh, but it's a thumbs up all around from me and of course as always like subscribe drop a comment what card you guys want to see next but for now I'm gonna roll this around the back get it cleaned up and on for sale but as always thanks for watching